Climate change, if not stopped, will lead to global catastrophe. We know this very well. We can't be sure exactly how quickly, but we know it will. The growing number of extreme weather events are tangible evidence. But really, what price are we all ready to pay today for the protection of the climate in the future? And if the price is too high for too many, are we paving the way for a new form of global political turmoil? Sounds like Catch-22. Welcome to Warsaw Debate at TVP World Series. I'm Grzegorz Nawrocki and this is my co-host Małgorzata Bonikowska from the Center of International Relations. Against the motion, finally, uh, Pershan Hamakarib, environmental scientist, Vistula University, but also Al Gore's foundation. Welcome. Uh, Kurt, hello. Hello, hello, from Iraq, living in Poland, ladies and gentlemen. That's something. And for the summary of this debate later on, and finally, Peshang Hamak Harim, your turn yeah. for an opening speech. We are facing a man-made disaster that we are responsible for. Why? Because I want to make my country's economy biggest, the highest among everyone. A political fight among the countries. But who suffers? You. You, the people in many countries. We are responsible for it and we need to change it. We have all the scientific basis for everything. Every scientist in the world, as my colleagues say, you should be a stupid if you deny climate change, is saying that we need to act now. Okay? So the question was that, do we have proper policies according to the graphics that our colleagues show? No, definitely not. Before burning coal, we, we had 200 parts per million CO2 in the, in the atmosphere. Where are we now? 400 parts per million, doubled. What's the effect? The flood that happened in Sicily, in uh, the southern Poland, destroyed lives of people. We are paying for it, and still we speak about investments of the country. We, pay, we are paying by our life, by our land, society. Guys, come on. If, if we are not fighting for it with a, with a strict concrete policy, we cannot have to speak about any future of anyone in the earth. Now, the global problem is the crisis of the migration. Okay? We will be having many migration in the world due to the political reasons and due to the climate issues. We need to pull out the brake emergency and we need to listen to everyone. The decision makers should listen to, the, to you, to the youth, because you will be the first generation that will face the devastation of the climate change. And definitely the policy that we are having today is not enough. And still we are thinking about making investments, think about it, but in a more strategic way. Shift from burning fossil fuels to the renewable energy. It's the future, future is there. So we need to be smart. We need to shift, have a fair transition for all. And my last point will be, we all should share responsibility because it's our future that all right. will Pesha. depend on it. Thank you. Thank you very much, thank you for this. Uh, but the real In fact is that w whether we talk about education or not, have a look at I don't know, yellow vests in France. If prices go up, and they will if we go on with these policies, people will react. And that reaction will be quite bland, as we have seen. Uh, um, farmers in Poland, uh, yellow vests in France, but there are other examples also. Just let yes. me ask you a question. Yeah. Have the price went up because we are, we are really f pressing too much in climate policy? And that's my do, question to do, you. Do you believe in that? I think it's a part do, of this. Do you believe yes, that I do the believe inflation it is a happened of this. in yes. Poland? It was because that the Polish government was, was pushing too much to f tackle climate change? But if we are to push the, uh, the, the climate change policies, pr some prices will have to go up. Some lowering of our living but standards I, will have to go down. We will have to accept it. The question is, are we going to accept it? The thing is that, uh, my dear friend, is, it's not related to each other. Mm -hmm. The prices are going up whether we are against the motion or with the motion. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a tough global economy that's going in that way. But the problem is here is that, think about that, you are, you are a worker in a, war, uh, uh, in a war store and for 12 hours in a day. And mm -hmm. you are super tired, you are going home yeah. to sleep, okay? While you want to sleep, 
a fire comes in your house. Do you say that? I am so tired. I need to wash uh, my, myself, may take a shower, and then I will is, extinguish the fire? Mm -hmm. No. You will just act immediately as if you weren't working at all. We are in this situation now. Okay, so you don't believe that uh, climate deniers, that populists might actually uh, uh, make use of this situation? They have conflict of interest. Okay. Conflict of interest right. with their economies that's happening in, in, in the country. Okay, Ignaz, so how, well, how else can we judge on this? How else can we measure it, if not the GDP? Um, I can answer yeah, that. Yeah. So basically, we have lost and gain. Mm -hmm. we, have, we can take how much millions of uh, zlotys did Poland lost during the flood happened in the southern Poland. Mm -hmm. You can measure that and the growth that happened in the country. So the, the net of that will tell you whether you are gaining or not. And the, we are losing so much. Just let me read you for you a statement. Extreme weather disasters cost the global economy $3.28 trillion okay? mm -hmm. in the last decade and increased almost $600 billion over the previous 10 years, says that the Gallup race. The climate crisis could cause $25 trillion loss in the global housing market strategy by 2050, mm -hmm. says the economist and financial indexing firm. Not me, not a person on the, on the ground. So we have the numbers in economical saying that we are in losing the battle. Okay. Where to find the equilibrium? Where to find the balance? Basically, my colleagues think he's really optimistic that we will live until 2100. You're not. Yeah. Uh, if we are going with this, mm -hmm. I'm not sure about it. You know, just in 2023, US experienced seven typhoons, seven typhoons in category five. Do you know what does that mean? It means that it will wash up an entire community with everything. Okay, you won't be having any ha home to live, any ha family to be with. Okay? See, but the argument for voters is that it might happen in 50 or 70 years okay, or 50 let, or whatever. Let, let, let me finish my argument. But next, next year, uh, the, the okay. fuel prices might go up, and that's my problem. Yeah, but the, the, the thing is that that used ca each Category 3 uh, typhoon will, will used to happen once in every 25 years. Now, seven, time, seven typhoons happen in just one year. Okay, so and it continues and it becomes a di more disaster and it threatens us. So we cannot have a smooth transition. I, mm. I, I totally agree with, with, with what he says. We, it's too optimistic. So we, we have United Nations, they have sustainable development goals. Okay, okay. okay look, look, 90% of the people of the vote here, 90%, mo almost everybody, 90% of the people believe that it will lead this way or another, it will lead us to catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Are they realistic or are they too pessimistic? There are two, uh, in my opinion, there are two uh, answers for this. One, lack of knowledge mm -hmm. of what's, what's, what's really going on. Well, that was to you, lack of knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it's to everyone, okay? Okay. So, uh, we are not only talking about Europe here. Mm -hmm. We are talking about the world. We are under the same dome and we are smelling the same air. So we are affecting it. Today, the poor sure. people in the world is, uh, is the first that's affected by the climate change. But believe me, tomorrow the rich people will be affected. We will be affected. You won't be having the well, second Well, we're being affected to, now, as a matter of fact, but only on a micro scale, yes. But to, tomorrow you'll be affected by a macro scale. Mm -hmm. And then you cannot think about how you can maintain your, uh, how you can grow your economy. You will only think about how should I survive, like the make migrants that are living their lands and mi migrate to other places. Sure. Right. OK, uh, we've got lots of young people in the audience today, and that's an, quite an important agenda for you, for, for the young people. And we have questions interested. also. Do we have questions? Yes. Great. And I also want to stress, you know, when I follow your discussion, that let's not discuss that the climate is changing and we want to save it, because everybody agrees with it's that. Obvious. Let's find out the way okay. how to do it in the middle, because you say that it's not enough we are doing, and you say that it's too much we are doing. So this is the dilemma we are facing. We have a question right. here. Please, introduce yourself. Good afternoon. My name is Max and I'm a ninth grader and also an attendee at Youth University. I have a question basically to every debater and we, it's, it, the answer space is uh, large. If you had all power in the world, what would you do step by step to reduce climate change? Oh, Thank that's you. a big question, really. Thank you very much. <laughs> would like to take it up. Right, good question. Right. Who would like to have the yeah. great power? Yeah. <laughs> I, I can answer. Please. We all share responsibilities. I, I, start, I should start from myself. I should re re reduce 
my waste, reuse, recycle in, in, a, in a, a micro scale from my, my, myself, my family, then as an organization, right. then as a government. So everyone should uh, just, share just their a responsibility. Just a follow-up question. Does this micro scale really work? It changed, yes. Why not? Because just I'm, I'm going to give you an example from my country, Iraq, which is counted as a developing country. We used to impose to people, educate them that mm -hmm. uh, recycling plastic will change Right. Think okay. okay, and it it, it affected planting trees affects the, the the having a clear okay. clear and air in, and environment. But the question so, was if you have all the power okay. and all the resources. Basically, I will just shut down all the fossil fuel mines yeah. and change them to solar panels. Wind what would turbines. you do with the companies who need energy okay. right now? They will get energy mm. from and people who are working there. Okay, yeah. they they will. Good evening. My name is Anna Ostrowska and my question is, are there any countries that have successfully protected the environment without weakening their uh, economy? And if yes, uh, what can we learn from them? Thank, Thank you. you. Of course, we have Norway, we have Denmark, okay? we have Netherlands. They are leaders okay? in, in, in the term of, of sustainability. And as a matter of fact, we, we need to have to believe in the science and to take them as, as a benchmark. For, for our uh, things and thoughts. Globally, globally wind, wind could, uh, could supply worldwide electricity consumption 40 times more. Mm -hmm. So where do we get the, the energy from, 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 from sun? And just I am quoting Kadri Simpson from the EU Energy Commissioner, mm -hmm. stating that Putin switched off the gas. He cannot repeat it with the sun. Okay, so if I am relying on sun, if I am relying on renewable wind turbines, okay, hydropowers, then I, I, I won't be lean, leaning on other countries. You won't be leaning on, on Middle East to provide you with, with fossil fuel. Then Middle East will, is ob obliged to find new ways of uh, increasing their economy. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is the, the way... So Scandinavian countries as a model for the rest of the world. But this is also a very, very important argument about security because we yes. have to also remember that as far as Europe, Europe is not self-sustainable as far as fossil fuels. So we are... No, now knowing that we need our own internal resources, so, sun, wind, all that. So without that, we are always dependent. Yes. We were dependent on Russia, we can be dependent on somebody else, but we are not able to have it at home. So for the Europeans, it's even a bigger, bigger challenge. However, let's come back to the money and to the cost and to the speed. How quickly we are able to improve implement all these changes without really destroying um, our businesses, our competitiveness, because that's another word we have to use. Draghi report you mentioned, it's about competitiveness of the European economy. How can we be competitive if we are facing this transition, meaning the prices of all the products would rise? Because of course, the, we, we talked about the it. business will put it on consumers. It's not a sustainable uh, economy for China. If you have your so solar panels, you, you have made net zero in your country, mm -hmm. so you can produce it your, by yourself without leaning to China. So it's not a sustainable. We are right. leaning on China because of the prices, but it won't right. be raised for the future. Okay, any other no. question from, from the but floor? Yes, uh, uh, maybe from this cheaper. side, yes. if we have any on that part of, of the audience. If not, then yes, please. Uh, hello, my name is Max, and I would like to ask a question about uh, the current state of the European uh, ener energy sources, because European energy sources are very unstable because of lack of fossil fuels and current war in Ukraine. What could we do to expand our logistical supplies of the, of the right now scarce resources mm -hmm. to produce those? Uh, a green energy uh, yep. per solar panels or any other kind of uh, renewable energy sources. Sure, thank you very much. Thank you. They were saying every 25 years we had a flood like this, but the last flood like this was in 2010, so it's only 15 <coughs> years, 14 years. That's, be that's the best kind of education, really, because you touch it, because you feel it, because it but really influences your life. Do I need to life. die to learn that there's climate change? Yes. No, but this is the you need to be destroyed. <laughs> your home, yes, and that's yeah, the last. Yeah, we're definitely we learning the hard way. That's, yeah. but yeah. why? Why? The this, most effective, this is the debate, Okay, so just let me tell you something. In you've, got a good, you've got a good collection of quotes, I see. For this <laughs> yes, because <laughs> yeah. this, is, well this is a matter of life and death for me. 
It's not just a joke debate that we are doing. No, okay? but look, it's oh, theoretical for you. Perhaps yeah. it's not theoretical for those people who, I who have just suffered from the floods, of course, but from flooding. But, exactly. but for us, it's all theoretical. That's my question. It's, it's, Do it's not feel? theoretical for me. Just let me tell you. Mm -hmm. A newborn baby in Warsaw, according to the scientific evidence, mm -hmm. inhales <coughs> 1,000 cigarettes per year mm -hmm. from the uh, smacks of, of, of the coal power plants. Each year, that newborn baby. That's why you will be having many, many diseases, cancers, mm -hmm. and then th you won't live long for it. And just coming back to the renewable energy, the question was that, what, where, where are we in Europe? Okay, in 2023, it uh, was the first year that wind generated more electricity in Europe than gas. So we have a great uh, will willingness in Europe, okay, uh, as an overall, okay, not speaking about states separately, but we need to expand this to the global scale. So the, the, the problem, the real problem for me, like a climate activist, is that, as my colleague said, Europe pushes so much, then now Trump will be the president of the United States. And what happens? Exactly. The first thing, resign from Paris Agreement. Okay? So this Which he has done already. Yeah, so, so the, he's, he's a climate denier. But no maybe, that, this, that my, maybe this is a problem also to us, because we are not debating here only the climate. We are yeah. debating the whole situation. Exactly. It's a combination. Politics it's like well. sustainable development, sustainable growth means growth as well, yes. means also people and the climate. So I want to ask you about ESG. Do you think this is the right approach to... Uh, not ESG to, to to look for the companies to report, you know, to uh, and to, to self-limit, of course, and, and self-limit, self -limit. meaning you know the report is just an instrument, yes. instrumental treatment of the data, but it leads towards the understanding of the business <coughs> that also it has to take into consideration right. all these facts. But on the other side, it limits the business. So mm -hmm. would this make sense? Now, time, ladies and gentlemen, time to take another vote here. Right, so the voting is over. We do have the results changed a bit, I must say. 61% for, as for now, and 39% against the motion. Well, we all hope to see the light at the end of this tunnel. After all, we only have one planet, and most people understand how important it is to protect it. We just need to do it wisely. Wisely. What yes, does it mean, word. wisely? That's the dilemma. That's it for tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. This was Warsaw Debate on TVP World. For more content from the region, follow us on tvpworld.com and on our social media. See you next time. Goodbye.